Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to talk about this. This is the Synology HAT3300 otherwise known as the Synology Plus Drive Series. Now this is a drive that we talked about a few months ago on the channel and it, arguably it is the latest, at least at the time of recording, latest addition to Synology's media lineup. A brand that has been known for I think it's close to 25 years now in the world of network attached storage but only in the last three or four years have they started rolling out their own branded media arguably to both positive and negative reception there now i'm going to go on a limb here right now get a bit tldr about this i'm a fan of this drive actually i'll be honest, i'll be straight with you i wasn't a tremendous fan of their m2 nvmes i wasn't a tremendous fan of their sata two and a half inch ssds i wasn't a tremendous fan of the hat 5300 enterprise series of sata and sas hard drives i understood that there is a market for that i understand there are people that rather than going for an unpopulated device want a truly turnkey solution that includes a drive with it or includes storage with it to a certain capacity wd made you know an absolute fortune millions upon millions off the back of that with their my cloud series I accept that that exists and I accept that there is a market for pre-populated solutions. So why am I having such conflicting emotion when I say that I'm actually kind of behind these drives when I wasn't as behind all of those other ones? Well, nice and simple. It's the target demographic and it is the way these drives have been presented. And in this video, we're going to talk about the specs, talk about things that we like and we're going to be doing some benchmarks, not only on a PC, but of course within a Synology system. Now, unfortunately, I've only got two of these, so the idea of doing mass raid testing should not withstand putting in a two bay in a mirror, we're not gonna get great numbers. So if you come to this video for larger scale performance numbers, I have linked towards an article to friend of the channel, um, over uh, Black Void, Luca over at Black Void, who's done a much larger scale testing of these drives in a larger environment. So do check out a link to his article, link below for more information on that. But for more, let's drill down a little bit into this drive before we get into the testing. Um, now, currently the Plus series is available in 4TB, 6TB, 8TB and 12TB. Uh, they're priced at, uh, respectively, $89, $149, $189, and $249 at the time of recording early November, day after Guy Fawkes, um, respectively, for each of those capacities, uh, resulting in a 0 0.2 uh, cent per gigabyte price point uh, down across the entire field there. So straight away, one of the um, issues that a lot of users had with the previous generation of Synology drives, it has to be said, that made them less appealing for a lot of users was the price point. With Synology rolling out a lot of their drives, be it the hard drives or the SSDs, at price points that dwarfed, um, sorry, uh, was basically overshadowing everyone else in terms of the height of that price in there compared with the WD, Seagate, your Toshiba, even the Toshibas they were built on. Now, in the case of this drive, it looks like they've been a lot more sensible about the pricing again at least at the time of recording because this is a seagate drive with synology firmware and synology branding it is a seagate iron wolf 4tb drive we have here now if we look at 4tb remember that's 89 dollars right now over on b and h and with that same drive the seagate iron wolf drive that this is built on is 93 dollars and amazon it was uh, in excess of a hundred dollars with the price vary during sales periods and on new egg 93 dollars that means at the time of recording, this drive is cheaper than Seagate. I'm sorry, it's cheaper than buying it on Amazon, B&H, or on Newegg now. Now, that's really impressive, given that it is an original Seagate drive. And unlike Synology's approach to the other drives that came before it, when they slapped on a Synology tax, that's something that's not been present here. Hopefully, it remains the case as well. But that already left me kind of impressed. Another thing was uh, recently we talked about BSM, uh, B Station Manager and BST150, a new pre-populated, kind of a more simplified Synology DSM and rollout solution that's pre-populated, pre-configured for genuinely turnkey solutions. And they're rocking out with these. More precisely, it's arriving with this very model of drive. Now, the reason that's important is that means if that creative pricing is to be just as good on the predefined model, that makes this drive even more appealing to those users I mentioned in the intro who are happy to pay extra for a pre-populated single ecosystem solution there. And then that's just another reason why I'm 
less negative about these drives. Another thing I will say, and when we talk about the benefits, something we talked about in other videos when we did our 5x5 on this, was one, it arrives obviously with Synology's firmware and having a drive with the firmware tailored towards one specific NAS solution rather than going for a NAS drive that has to be a little bit more open-ended in its architecture so it can suit a lot of different kinds of server and their software is always going to be advantageous. But also you can update the firmware from within DSM. I'll show you the option later on Synology DSM software. So again, there's little advantages there and you do still need to power down the system. But unlike with third-party drives where you've got to connect them via SATA, um, or via a docking station into a third-party OS to download the client application and install the OS for the latest firmware updates. That's something we can do within the Synology DSM ecosystem there. And it's got 180 terabytes uh, workload per year. It's got a three-year warranty uh, on the drive there. And indeed, although of course it will work in third-party systems, I wouldn't really use this in a non-Synology system. It seems really odd, unless you're getting a good bargain for a 4TB. That warranty, I'm not sure how that warranty will sit if you use this in a non-Synology system, but that's a matter for you and Synology. Performance numbers wise, uh, they rate 202 megabytes per second sequential read uh, uh, on the uh, 4, 6 and 12 TB model. But as the, uh, sorry, the 4, 6 and 8 TB model, but the 12 TB model, as it has a higher RPM because the uh, larger amount of access uh, time uh, improvements, that performance actually spikes up to 240 megabytes per second in the 12 TB model. So all of these numbers, by the way, every bit of those numbers is near enough identical to that of a Seagate. Now on screen right now, hopefully you're seeing um, some of the testing we did on the PC, because there's not much point digging into it too deep, because one, this is not a drive intended for PC use, and two, this is a single drive benchmark uh, in Atto, in AJA, and Crystal Disk. And across all of those, it gave us pretty much what we expected, in excess of 200 megabytes per second, working absolutely fine. And of course, all of these were tailored tests between 256 meg, I think we've got a one gig in four, gig testing there on screen and all in all those are all fairly standard numbers there for that drive and indeed for so if Synology were to roll out a standard class drive you know that's what I would expect not a pro series drive because they kind of did that with that HAT 5300 um, another thing I will say is with this when it comes to compatibility all of the systems with which this drive appears on the compatibility list for all of those systems also have on compatibility listings your WD your Seagate um, uh, your Toshiba, your whatever. Another thing that's quite interesting, something I've talked about in other videos, and something fair play to Synology, they could have rigged the game a bit. They haven't listed this drive on their Enterprise class. They've not listed it on the SA, they've not listed it on any of the XS series devices, the UC. That only lists Enterprise drives, and frankly, all of those are just Synology on their own. It would have been very easy for them to rig it so that all of their enterprise level systems list the compatibility of Synology enterprise drives and Synology standard class drives to kind of give people the illusion of choice but still be within the Synology ecosystem. But they didn't do that. They only listed these drives up to the Plus series and it stops there. Which then leads us to the question of DSM itself and its interpretation of these drives. If we make our way into the storage manager here, uh, currently we're using a DS920 Plus, make our way into the available drives. As you can see, we've got a couple of WD4TBs here, and lower down, we've also got the HAT3300 4T. And again, if we go into it there, we've got the usual health information there that we can garner, find out more info about it, the smart test results, their history of the drive, and any diagnosis that have been performed on that drive. The same goes nearly identical to that is if we go for a 4TB drive from a third party there. Um, if we go in and test that drive we can look at our benchmarks make our way into the benchmark there and as you can see using their test internal benchmarks there they had uh, throughput measured at 186 over 185 now I know they are not the 200 megabytes per second plus performance numbers we saw on the PC benchmark system there. That's because we were able to control the size of the files that we're dealing with here but these are going to be preset internally. Now, to put that into comparison there, if we make our way over to these 4TB WD Red drives here, again, these are slightly older generation WD Red, which haven't seen some of the firmware improvements of recent years, but still nonetheless, all the way along there, as you can see, 173 over, uh, 172 over 174, 168 over 169, and that's an drive there running at 184. 
6 over 185. Ultimately, if I took that WD drive and stuck it inside the PC, we would see numbers in excess of 200 anyway. But still within the benchmark, we've at least got that number. And of course, the other thing is mentioned earlier on, we can run firmware updates. This drive has got the latest firmware on board, but it's nice to know that we can update that firmware internally in a way that we can't really if we we're using a third party system. There isn't anything really at the moment that is denied to us not even a lot of the storage global settings are removed when using some of those third party drives it's all included there isn't really any limitations however i do think and again this is more about synology's approach more recently to pre-populated devices than the drive in itself it is of course bearing in mind that although i praised uh, synology when it comes to the class drives in that compatibility listing which would have been a real quick buck way for them to upsell uh, their lower tier drives i will say that when we look at systems like the ds224 plus and its compatibility list of course it does list all of those drives we're looking at there is our 4tb drives there but if we move on to the third parties although there are support of all of those third party drives that we just mentioned absolutely loads of drives there Relatively speaking, if we look at Seagate there, there are only 12 drives here on this available listing, which range from 1 to 16 TB, even though Seagate, I know full well, support 22 TB drives right now, and I've tested 22 TB drives on Synology systems there. Also, they don't list the Pro drives here, when uh, conversely, when we look at an older generation system, so if we look at Synology's own website here, and go for a much, much, much older system, and I say much, 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 let's go for the DS220 plus the previous generation of that uh, intel based series and we look at its compatibility of hard drives there by comparison and again the page will take an extra second or so to load that database we make our way in and look at its compatibility of drives not only is it continuing to list the enterprise class drive something i find quite weird in terms of internal messaging um, but on top of that when we go to the third party drives there and we look at the third party supported drives overall we can see significantly more drives there there's three pages when there was only one before and when we list the seagate we've got 50 results in this one page alone now, as Synology keeps moving forward into producing their own range of uh, pre-populated uh, pre solutions like the BST-150 and almost certainly releasing larger versions of this system pre-populated with their own drives, there is question marks for me about how Synology moving forward is going to treat compatibility on their newer devices. Systems like this are almost certainly going to completely and utterly eradicate um, the J series and maybe but probably not at least for a long time the value series at all and with that with these systems arriving with firmware updates that are predefined to the drive inside and by that what I mean is you're not just getting DSM but this is DSM that has been built and pre-configured for specifically that drive and this system arrives with this very same HAT4TB model it makes me wonder about technology moving forward and compatibility I can't fault this drive in terms of its performance uh, again if you head over over to black void's article where he does a lot deeper testing in ray configurations than i and just the general performance and overview that you get within dsm with this storage i can't fault it it's great it's a very very good drive for that but it's where synology is moving forward and what parts of its portfolio are slowly but surely going to be pre-populated and slowly kind of ease out compatibility of third-party drives and what this drive represents i like this drive and i like that at the moment at least it appears to be optional. I like the fact that right now, if I use this drive and I want to utilize it, you know, in my Synology NAS system, mix it with some WD, some, you know, Seagates in separate RAID pools, obviously you can use SHR to mix and match as well. That's absolutely fantastic. But I want it to remain the case. And if they start changing things, then my love for this drive will change quite rapidly. But as long as it's an option supporting those that want pre populated solutions, I like this drive. But if the things change down the road with the way uh, Synology present their solutions with and without these drives, that will be a very different subject indeed. Finally, there are the questions about separating this drive from the Seagate Iron Wolf drive that clearly is inside. What are you getting? What are you losing? Well, obviously, getting this drive means you're getting that easy firmware update. You're getting a drive that's integrated with its firmware being updated and optimized from within the very system 
that it's going to be utilised with rather than keeping things open-ended, as I mentioned earlier on. But what are you actually losing out on? Well, predominantly, if you go for a Seagate Ironwolf drive, the 4TB that this is built on again, the 4, the 6, the 8, the 12, you're missing out on Seagate Ironwolf um, Rescue Recovery Service, three years of data recovery service, where they will, you know, go to, you know, down to a mechanical level to try to recover that data, and that's included with the drive. Now, I kind of wish Synology included that. Now, maybe... That's why this drive's a bit cheaper than a Seagate, who knows? But it still seems a bit of a bummer to me that going for this drive over the Seagate Iron Wolf, I'm losing out on that potential data recovery. Now, that data recovery is kind of inherently flawed. It has, we talked about this before, when you have lots and lots and lots of drives in a raid configuration and you lose two drives, even if you perform that data recovery, you're getting fractions of data. And that fractions of data within a raid might mean that you can't even recover the whole data anyway that would have been spread over the drives because the recovery of that data they're not going to present it to you all brand spanking new 100 percent completely shiny to reset into your raid configuration no they'll give you an external ssd an external hard drive or access to an online portal where all that data is scattered and if it's part of a raid it's borderline useless so there are users that are not even seeing the benefits of utilizing that data recovery service if they've gone for the wd drive in the first place and might prefer the ease of dsm uh sorry uh firmware updates on these drives within the in the within the nas infrastructure without having to remove the drives and stick them in a piece and risk dropping them or shaking them around or you know static or anything that might damage the drive or taking the system offline for too long ultimately there is definitely a market for this drive and i see more than any of the other drives in Synology's hard drive portfolio why people are interested in this and why there are users that will jump on this but let me reiterate what i said earlier in the video i do like this drive and i like that bst series that's going to be populated but i don't like it if big if this ends up changing Synology's portfolio for the worse. And if it, this drive marks the turning point when Synology start rolling out their solutions pre-populated as standard up to a point, and then maybe the Plus series gets even more restrained on its compatibility, that's when my liking for this drive will certainly change. But for now, it's a good drive. It does exactly what it says it will. It's competitively priced. It does have utilities in some ways above and beyond using third-party drives. And I can see why Synology went for it. I can understand why you're considering it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments if you have. Again, we'll do the, all the performance testing that we did in the background. will be published in the link below along with Luca's article as well. Do head over um, to NAS Compare's free advice section on the right-hand side of the page if you need help. We've also got the new fully functional NAS Finder on there that will help you decide the perfect NAS for your needs. You can break it down to the utility, the number of users, your bandwidth, the works. Put it into there and it will spit out at the bottom the NASs that are appropriate to your needs. Or go over to the Discord or the Ask NAS Compare's um, uh, forum for more support from ourselves and other members of the NAS community. Finally, join our membership program if you want to access these videos early as well as access our monthly zoom meetings uh, where we talk about storage um, uh, technique and q and a's and lots of seminars like that as well as of course hiring myself there over on ko-fi uh, for data consultation but apart from that have yourselves a bloody great week and i'll see you next time